Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Today I want to bring you a few tutorials um, to show you how to use uh, the photo snap tool in Bernina's embroidery software version 7. It's this tool is in under the toolbox section under the tab auto digitize and it's called photo snap. Now what photo snap was originally um, designed for was to be able to bring photographs of people into the software and digitize them. The tool works in this way, but I've found you have to you have to have really the perfectly suited photo for this to work. Um, a lot of people take photos these days with their smartphones or just a, a standard digital camera and you usually don't take the photos in black and white and they're not real real high resolution and so it can be challenging finding a photo that has the right contrast and finding a photo that has uh, the right size and the the right amount of high resolution for this tool to work real effectively when you're doing photographs of uh, people's faces so so students I've found in the past they will I will introduce them to the tool and I'll, I'll demonstrate it and they'll think oh that's cool but then they don't ever use it uh, they just kinda pass over the tool and it, it's a very powerful tool and it can be leveraged in a different way than just to use it for photographs of people's faces and that's what I want to talk about today well I was uh, doing a little research on this tool on different ways to use it I ran across a blog post on the we also uh, website which is Bernina's uh, like designing blog website and I'll bring that up I ran across the blog post from 2012 called photo snap art and uh, this lady Carol Nuns from so generously in St. Charles Illinois was nice enough to write this blog post and this was a few years ago and I'm just discovering it <clears throat> and it's a really great little blog post on how to use the photo snap tool for abstract art creating different types of art that you can leverage in different ways and you can see if you read through her blog post and I'll put a link on my website I'll put a link just under this video that'll take you right to the we also blog and you can see as you read through this the very creative ways that Miss um, Carol decided to use the photo snap tool so this gave me a little inspiration and so today that's what I want to bring you I want to introduce to you the photo snap tool if you've never seen it and if you have used it and just kind of forgot about it I want to introduce you to a new way of thinking a new way of using this tool that's pretty cool it's actually uh, really cool so we'll get started it, I'm gonna bust this tutorial up into a few different video tutorials I like to do that because I don't want you all to get lost so really um, the first tutorial if you if y'all don't have photographs at home just laying around all over the place of abstract art of of nature art and whatnot I'm gonna show you how to go to Google and then do an image search for the right type of images that we can really have fun with inside uh, v7 software using the photo snap tool so if you don't mind why don't you all head on over to Google okay and it's just google.com oh no no Google <laughs> sorry folks out by accident Google decided to do a voice search so I'm gonna hit the back button I must have accidentally clicked uh, voice search right there so okay um, okay we are at Google now and I'm just gonna type in let's see uh, just like what we saw here on the we also blog Miss Carol took some photographs of some trees and you can see the creative artistic effect the silhouettes of the trees created so I'm just gonna search for an image of a tree okay so let's do tree photo graph or maybe just tree photo 
just do a tree photo. Okay, now once we do tree photo, you can see that I'm searching the entire web here. I'm going to click images, so I'll left click images because I want to see just images. So the page will refresh, and here we go. Now, Google has a lot of cute little or powerful little tools that you can use to refine your search. So the only photographs that we would be looking at are things that will work for the photo snap tool. So at this point, I'm going to go all the way to the right here, and I'll left click on search tools, and you see it pop down to give me some more options. Now under these options, I'm going to go to the color tab and left click that, and instead of any color, I want to look at just black and white photos. So I'll left click black and white. Now you can see the only thing that it's showing are black and white photos. This is what we want for the photo snap tool to use the photo snap tool to its fullest ability we want highly contrasting um, photos like black and white they need to we don't want a lot of gray tones blended in we want really we want these photos to contrast quite a bit so here we go we're looking at just black and white now the next filter is size let me click on size and because we're taking a photo which is pixels we're not dealing with vector art since we're taking pixels we don't want to be using small photos we don't want to be using photos that have small resolution low resolution we want big photos so I'm gonna sort by large okay and now we have some options we're looking at just large photos we're looking at just large black and white photos of trees and you can see we have a bunch of options now let me look is anything sticking out at me that I like now the way that I want you to try to think is okay what would be good for abstract art what would be good for creating a panel that I would put on a quilt block or maybe panels for a, a little pillow all right let me show you what I'm talking about I'll click back to the we also blog and when I say, you know, you have framed art here and you can see how it's kind of a square panel, that's one thing that Miss Carol did. And then as you scroll down, you see she used the photo snap tool to do these little orbs on these little panels for a pillow. So that's kind of the way that I'm trying to think when I'm looking at this art. What would be good for that? And I see one right here. You see this dude right here? That's kind of nice. So let me click on that. I'm going to left click on that guy. Yeah, that looks nice. And it looks like this was just made with a Sharpie or a black marker. Um, then I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go left click on view image and it'll take us just to the page where this photo is saved on the internet. And at this point I'm gonna right click on that photo and hit save image as. So I'll left click save image as, then I need to figure out where I want to save this image. So I'm, I've created an embroidery library and this, this may be different for you. You have probably a special place on your computer that you save your photos. So you don't have to do this part exactly the way that I do it. But I have a little folder over here under my libraries. I have a library called embroidery. So I'll left click that. And then I'm just going to rename where it says file name. I'm going to rename this one little helpful hint that I'll give you right here as you're sorting through the internet you're you're going through the internet looking for different images and you find a bunch of different images that you want to save for the photo snap tool I recommend you name them all you start them all off by naming them photo snap space and then describing what it is like so photo snap tree and I'll name it one tree one so if I find another tree that I like I'll name that dude photo snap tree two all right and if I find a tiger that I like or a picture of some leaves I would of course name that photo snap tiger one photo snap leaves one then everything will automatically save itself all bunched together so it'll be easy to find in the future very easy for you to go back and find these things if you name them correctly 
So I've named it Photo Snap Tree 1, and then I'm going to left click Save, and I have saved that dude. Okay? So let me minimize my web browser, and now we're looking at the embroidery software. I'm going to now go to the Art Canvas. All right? So let's left click the Art Canvas button here. We'll left click the Art Canvas button. And now I want to import that photo that I saved. So I'm going to go up and left click Import. I left clicked it. Now I'm going to find where I saved the photo. And of course, I saved it in the embroidery library. Okay? And I could see it here. But if I didn't see it in my window, it would be as easy as me clicking in the file name. And I know they're all named uh, photo snap. So P H O T. See there? It automatically populates. And I'll hit import. And then I hit enter on the keyboard. And there it is. Now, I'm going to stop here for this particular tutorial. And I'm going to record another follow up tutorial that's going, the next one that you'll see, the next one is going to show you how to prepare, properly prepare this photograph inside Corel Draw so we can get the best possible result using the PhotoSnap tool. Okay? So stand by for the next video, which is, shows you how to prepare the image for PhotoSnap.